I don't think I'm going to spend a super long time talking about the bucket system just because this is a preview slash strategy video and I want to build some lineups here at the end and talk about more golf related things. Um, but if you are new to the channel, basically what I like to do is use the bucket system, which if you're unfamiliar with, there's a video in the description that'll explain all about it or a link to a video in the description that explain all about it. If you want to follow along with me, I have a cheat sheet again, link in the description for this, go to the bucket system portion of it. Go ahead and throw that filter on there that says the bucket system. And that way you can follow along with me because I'm going to go stat by stat and just quickly go through all the projections. So we start with the last year stat, which means what did they do last year? And of course, I track this dating back to 2014. 2013 is when my stats, when I first start tracking stats, but I don't look at 2012 for 2013 because then I would track stats going back to 20. You, you see like that, that paradox that c continues to happen. So 2014 is when we start the last year stat, uh, when we start looking at it for top 10 finishes. I calculate the success rate for all golfers that have ever been in that bucket. Uh, and then to create my, my projections, we do use that success rate. We look at how many golfers are in that bucket this year. We also look at the strength of field points that are represented for that bucket. That will help us get our projections and our minimum. I, if you add this up, it equals six. Our max goes up to 10. I want to find golfers that'll finish inside the top 10. So max is what I have for 10. Six is just to make sure it covers our lineups because we need to build a lineup with six golfers in it. So that's how the projections are created. Uh, there are other things to, to look at. So like when, when I say, Hey, this projection is technically one to two, but obviously there are rules that go with it. If this number isn't greater than two, this automatically has to go to zero. So this first bucket, the last year one bucket would be technically zero to two. The reason being is I've done this long enough. I know you need a two point buffer. It's the only way to be accurate when it comes to the projections. You have to be careful. Uh, especially when we only have 14 golfers in that bucket. That's that's a pretty low number when we usually see about 15, 15, yeah, somewhere north of 15 golfers um, in that bucket. Other stats we can look at, not every year do we have an optimal lineup golfer or a golfer that is in the optimal lineup from this bucket, but pretty darn close, 83% of the time we do, that's pretty good. Uh, and then when we look at top five frequencies, 8.76%, that's not super good, but it's better than than most. Um, so when we look at these, these projections, um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll cover the things that we need to be looking at. So zero to two would be our last year ones. Uh, and if you want to follow along with me on the cheat sheet, all you have to do is go to here. I'll pull up the cheat sheet here, go to the dream sheet, put that filter on the DraftKings filter. And basically in the last year column, clear everything out and then whatever bucket we're looking at or whatever bucket you want to look at, you just select that bucket. So last year ones, and there are 14 here. So let me go ahead and do that to my, um, my sheet. Right here. I'm going to hide this column. We don't need to see that it. it's redundant, redundant, redundant information. Um, and I do have it sorted by. Marquee, marquee tea times. Anyways, I'm going to sort it by salaries and look at last year ones. So there's our 14 golfers. We have two 10K golfers, including Sung JM, Russell Henley, drops into the 8K range a little bit, and then our sevens and sixes. I don't necessarily look at our sevens and sixes. If you want to find a golfer to anchor your lineups around, I think you just look at 8K and above. But if there is someone in the 7K range, then you so, if you're Go for it. I think pick that golfer if it fits your lineup build. Um, my first, my eyes gravitate towards Sungjae. We were just talking about it in um, the past optimal and GPP winning lineups. 10K golfers with a really good course history like Sungjae just shows up uh, more inside the top 10 than usual. So Sungjae is a pretty good play, but if you want to be contrarian, maybe it's Russell Henley. Maybe you're dropping down here. It, it is whatever you want it to do or whatever you want it to be. So that is your last year ones. Again, I'm going to fire through this 
just giving you ideas of what these golfers look like. Zero to two last year twos. If I go ahead and look at those golfers, uh, it starts with JT Postnet, ninety two hundred dollars, and then it drops in the seven and six k range. Yeah, this is an easy one to consider zero out of. But if there's some golfers, I mean, actually, you know, JT Poston's pretty hot, like like playing pretty pretty hot. Billy Horschel's kind of getting it back together. I think he's played this tournament pretty well in the past. I like Brendan Todd and Andrew Putnam. Those are all, those are pretty good golfers to choose from. Uh, and then there's some guys down here that I don't mind. Here's Ryan Henson's uh, Doc Redman, obviously from this bucket. But the one thing I know I won't be doing is playing more than two golfers from this bucket. So it's zero to two. So Ryan, if you like Doc Redman, and he's going to be an automatic um, staple in your lineups. Can't play two of these other guys up here. You only can play one more. That's how I look at the bucket system that way. Uh, the rest of these buckets are actually zero to two until we get down to golfers who did not play the Wyndham Championship the year before. So we can we can breeze through this. So we're going to go and click our last year threes. We have a limited amount here. So zero to two is the projection here. I think that's warranted. Uh, last year fours. Interesting. We have Adam Scott, Aaron Rye to be our 8K and 9K golfers, and then our sevens down to our sixes. Um, yeah, Adam Scott is one of my favorite plays this week. Zero to two is the projection, though. Just remember that. And usually this is the worst bucket. It's crazy that Adam Scott, 76th place finish? I thought he was in that playoff last year. Was it the year before? It was the year before, 2021. That was the big... Okay. I, I Oh, yeah, that's right. Tom Kim won last year. I forgot about that. Um, Okay. Yeah, that's not a good finish. Uh, this is usually like one of the worst buckets to select golfers from. So, I don't know. Maybe we can have a trend breaker or mold breaker out of this. But, yeah, zero to two. That's not super good. Uh, and Adam Scott was one of my favorite golfers. He probably still is going to be, but I will probably limit my exposure to him. Uh, and then our last bucket is the two to four last year sixes. Ooh. So last year six means they didn't play last year. Now this can include golfers that have zero course history. I don't know what the number is when it comes to zero course history, but you know, when we look at someone like Ludwig Aberg or even Vincent Norman, just know they're it's the first time playing this event and how about this let's go really quickly through each of these years and just find does any okay so tom kim right away tom kim would be one of those golfers who did not play the year before and had zero course history but so too would ben griffin so too was taylor moore so too is max mcgreevy so just last year there were a ton of those golfers inside the top 10 in 2021, we do not see that, but I think that has a that has more to do with the fact that this was a coming back from COVID year and there was no graduation. 2020, we have Sam Burns at $7,200, so yeah, that works. Uh, Chris Baker, Will Gordon, not not great results. 2019, we do have Victor Hovland up there, so there we go, and Sung J M. So we have two there. 2019, 2018, not so much. John Oda. And Doug Kim, yeah, maybe not the greatest. 2017, we had our winner. Oh, see, now, my data goes back to 2013. I know Henrik has played prior to 2013. I just don't have that data. So I don't know if he has course history. But we can use Richie Wierenski, who finished 10th place. Soren Kjeltsen, who finished 70, or six, 16th place. JJ Spahn, 68. Um, 2016, I really don't know if Rafa had played prior to that. Or Graham McDowell. Or I'm guessing Jim Furyk had, and so too had Kevin Na. But maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't. And then this is more proof that you can use these guys. Um, and then, yeah, Tiger's up here. So iffy. Very iffy. I guess to me, you know, like last year, we had a graduation from the Corn Ferry to the PGA Tour. Uh, and then we had these golfers here finish inside the top 10. Uh, obviously, it doesn't happen every single year, but for the golfers, who are in the last year six bucket, and obviously that bucket says play two to four golfers. Hey, if this there's there's a time to play Ludwig Aberg, maybe it's now. You know, Vincent Norman just won a couple weeks ago. Does that really matter? Who knows? Eric Cole. 
Uh, let's see, who has really good... I mean, Thomas Dietrich has really good Bermuda stats. Maybe we use Thomas Dietrich, who, who doesn't have course history. Or maybe we just ignore people who don't have course history. Or that I should say, yeah, ignore those that don't have course history and only play those that do have course history. I don't know. Um, I wish I had these combinations that I could show you. With the website, whenever I get that up and running, it, that will show you guys that. But uh, as of right now, I don't. I think, though... Again, you want to select two to four. Maybe we don't select more than two golfers from this bucket that have zero course history. Maybe we just keep it two and under. And then go from there. We'll see how lineup building goes. I mean, I will have the, the course history two, or the course history sixes, which are no course history. We'll have that, I think zero to two is our projection for that. So we won't play more than two golfers that have uh, no course history. But of course, we'll touch up on that here shortly. I'm going to move on to the last week buckets. Um, like this is what happened last week at the 3M Open. And this is what happens every... I shouldn't say what happens. Um, this is using data from every single Wyndham Championship and looking at the tournament that preceded the Wyndham and seeing what those finishes were for golfers that did finish inside the top 10. Um, so success rates are pretty high for golfers that did play the week before and finish fairly well. Top 20, 20 to 40th place. Uh, we do have an outlier here with the 60 to 80th place, which is interesting. Um, and also one other note, I, I, I saw this before jumping live. Normally we see about 30 golfers who missed the cut from the week before. This year we have 62. And then we inverse, like that. there's a flip. Normally we see 86 golfers who did not have not or did not play the week before the window. We have 31 this week. So it just shows you, I think, people trying to get into the FedEx Cup playoffs, needing to play every event leading into it. So they had to play the 3M Open last week to get more points or try to get more points and then also play the Wyndham. So this is crazy. Uh, literally, uh, this is something that I don't think a lot of people are talking about. Not that it, it, it... It's not so much that people aren't talking about like it really matters determining you know what's going to happen this week but just the mere fact that we normally see 86 golfers not play the week before the window and this week it's 31 i think that tells you more about how tight the fedex cup playoffs are and how how many golfers want to get into the fedex cup playoffs that are not yet eligible maybe that's what it is the top 70 in ties whereas if it was top 125 in ties that get into the playoffs golfers wouldn't be playing this week or wouldn't have played the 3M Open and just show up here. Maybe that's how it goes. Anyways, interesting point to bring up. I don't think it really matters when it comes to results or I shouldn't even say that because we're going to see that in the projections. It just naturally happens. Um, but when we look at this last year, one projection. I mean, last week, I, dude, I always do that. Last week, one projection. Technically, it says one to three. Remember, we round up here, we round down here. So one to three, technically. But I have this conservative projection over here for maximums, and that's to two. So we round up to two, which means the minimum has to be zero. So last week ones, to me, it's zero to three. And again, if you want to follow along on the cheat sheet, which again, you can find a link in the description for, I uh, make sure there's no other filters on and clear out the last year or the last week buckets and just select one. So here we have, um, why is Bo in there? Or not Bo, Thomas Dietrich. He should not be. He should be a six. I think I might have... Oh, I know why that happened. I'll double check to make sure um, that doesn't affect the other buckets. So when we go through this, I'll, I'll make sure. And maybe that's why. Oof, that would not be good. 2023, where's Dietrich? So it doesn't affect now the bucket projections would be correct. It does not matter what's on my cheat what's on my sheet. Um, but that means I do have to update it for you guys also. Okay. That should be updated now. Uh, and I will I'll make these updates as I go through. I think it was just my copy over from the cheat sheet to the sheet. I don't know. Okay. So. 
when it comes to golfers who finished last week inside the top 20, let's see if that actually changed the projections. Uh, a little bit, but not much. Okay. JT Poston, Cam Davis, Aaron Rye. These are golfers who finished inside the top 20 last week. Uh, Bo Hausler, Billy Horschel. Remember, this is a projection that's 0 to 3. Um, I don't see many names that require our attention. Like, I like JT Post and I like Cam Davis, but I don't know if I really necessarily want to play them. Same goes with Aaron Rye, Bo Hosler, and Billy Horschel. Billy Horschel does have my attention, by the way. I do not mind playing Billy Horschel this week. Um, Streelman also has my attention. $7,300 is pretty cheap. And I think Alex Norin um, is pretty decent as well. So those are, those are names that I don't mind playing. When it comes to the last week twos, that's also a zero to two projection. Again, I'm going to try to fire through this. Hideki Matsuyama and Adam Scott are up there. So this is really interesting because we just talked about the last year buckets with Scott, uh, with Adam Scott and him not being in like a super good bucket. Oh God, he's not even supposed to be in this bucket either. Okay. I'm going to have to make some changes to your guys' spreadsheet once again. 97 and 84. So 84 here. Uh, if you are copying this over, you could just use this last week uh, column here and make the updates there. I apologize that this isn't updated the proper, the proper way. Okay. So this is going to update the... It doesn't really matter with the projections. It will update the strength of field points, like what goes into it, but it really won't, it, it won't move it too much. Uh, but we do have less golfers than obviously I was just talking about. 16 of them. Um, now we don't have to talk about Adam Scott, which means zero to two. You know what? That's kind of hard to, it's a hard pill to swallow because I don't mind playing Hideki Matsuyama with like a Steven Yeager. I also wouldn't even mind putting like Patrick Rogers together with these guys. And I really like Eric, Eric Cole this week. So zero to two for the projection is kind of tricky. This also kind of helps us. Obviously the, uh, um, I see Anna and it's texting me and I'm texting her back. Hi, Anna. How's it going? Um, Oh, Ryan. Yeah. Let's get some, some chat participation. All right, let me get back here. So, I really like at, uh, Eric Cole this week. Like, I, I do want to play Eric Cole. I think this is perfect. I, I like the... Like, you know, he had a good finish at the Honda Classic, which was on Bermuda, quote-unquote Bermuda. I feel like he's probably better than what his... I just look at his, his Bermuda stats, and he's got terrible overall and last year Bermuda splits. Um, but... I still like him. I still want to play him. Kevin Yu, on the other hand, by the way... Those are some good stats on Bermuda for being seventy or seven thousand dollars. So interesting choices there. Okay, I see. I I see you, Ryan. We'll we'll pick up. We'll pick your uh, Nagel's lineup this week. Okay, so let's go ahead and move to the next one. Last week threes zero to two. Uh, last week three and four. They're zero to twos. So let's go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jesus. Let's go ahead. Last week threes. Um, I'm probably going to have to make some updates. Yep. Okay, so Brendan Todd did not play last week. Neither did Andrew Putnam. Neither did Scott Stallings or Zach Johnson. There you go. Perfect. Zero to two is a good projection here. I'm not even going to stick here. Uh, I think if you have some, some golfers that you have... Um, can't think of the word. Convictions on... Go ahead and select them. Don't select more than two golfers, though. Honestly. Uh, I think that's a good safeguard. Just don't do it. Last week, fours. We also have two guys here that did not play. So let me go ahead and remove that. This is also a zero to two bucket. Oh, my bad. We have Aberg, CT Pan. Those are good names. I don't mind them. Uh, CT Pan, $6,700. That seems like a pretty good value. If I'm being honest with you. Uh, and then the rest of the guys. 
Not that big of a deal. Zero to two is a good projection. I'm going to go to last week fives, and what I'm going to do is actually uh, fix some of these that should not be last week fives. And that might change the projections. I want that to happen. Actually, it wouldn't change the projections. Not that much. Okay. Let's see what the projections update to. They do actually. Good, 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 good. All right. So this was like two to five, which means I need to update this in the optimizer. So it's one to three, which I think is way better. And then one to three last week, sixes. Yeah, that's about right. That's what a normal bucket system is supposed to look like. Okay. So we want one to three from this bucket. Golfers who missed the cut last week, which includes Justin Thomas. It includes Sung JM. One to three. Hey, man, I don't mind playing Sung J and JT together. I think that's actually a pretty good start. And then there's Adam Hadwin, which is getting a lot of, a lot of clout. So if you want three golfers, I think that's pretty good. You could do three golfers like that. Uh, what's going on, Byron? And I was going to say Shali Karn, but I already said hi to you. We got our first lineup selection, Bernsey and Denny. Okay. All righty. So Sungjae, JT, Adam Hadwin, I think those are all good plays. I know Byron's on Adam Hadwin this week. I know you don't care for JT, but I think this is a good spot for JT. And same too with Sungjae. But the projections say one to three, which means you'd have to ignore the rest of these guys down here, which maybe it's easy to do because I'm not seeing any names really. Austin Eckroat seems decent. Uh, I don't mind going to Hoygaard or Pendrith, but... I don't mind. I, d I really like these three names, man. Really like these three names. And starting 10, 9, 8, pretty simple, pretty easy. But again, the projection's 1 to 3, so that means I can't really do much more uh, with selecting golfers. We'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll build a lineup like that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. The next one is last week sixes. Those are golfers who did not play last week. Let me just double check that this is all correct as well. Yeah, there we go. And this starts with Russell Henley, Sam Burns, Adam Scott, Shane Lowry. Yeah, so one to three out of this bucket is probably going to be way more challenging to select than the one to three from the, um, the last week fives. So, interesting. Maybe you guys can figure out who your favorite golfers are here. I see Chris Kirk, which I believe, Byron, you're on. I'm not positive, but I think you are. Um, so we'll see. All right, going to the next one. Course history buckets. Does course history matter at this event? It looks like most of these projections are one to two, one to three. Uh, so yeah, having some course history matters. And then obviously we're going to talk about course history sixes. As you can see, zero to two. So we're talking about Ludwig Aberg. So those golfers who did not play last year, so the last year sixes, combined with the course history sixes, which have no course history, we don't want to play more than two. However, if we're really looking at the stats, we've had up to six before finishing inside uh, the top 10. And that actually, I'm very curious. I want to look at what those numbers are. So if we were to go to course histories uh, and look at the sixes. So we've had three years where we had five or more. Of those three years, let's double check how many golfers were actually in those buckets. So it was here, here, and here. So when we had high numbers, so 18, 19, 25, those are higher than any of the numbers in between. How many do we have this year, this week? 31. So I guess having more than two course history sixes is definitely a possibility. I know the numbers here are a little bit different, but this is based off of a ranking scheme that I used to do. I don't use those anymore. Um, but yeah, that's pretty interesting. So anyways, let's just go through this. It looks like we need to look one to threes when it comes to course history threes, zero to three when it comes to course history fours, but everything else is zero to two. So make sure you, you clear all the filters, meaning select everything and all the other filters. We'll go ahead, course history ones. Uh, and this is zero to two, which I think is pretty, pretty easy to think of. Don't play more than two golfers that you see on the screen so sung jay if you like him awesome hey we saw a bunch of optimal lineup 
golfers uh, or optimal lineups that started with two 10K golfers. So maybe it's Sung Jae and Burnsy this week. Um, maybe not. Maybe it won't be Burnsy this week. Maybe it's just Sung Jae, or maybe it's just I, obviously we know that. But zero to two is the projections that we can use. Uh, I don't mind Cam Davis, and I don't mind some of these other guys, especially to fill in your lineups with. But that's course history ones. Course history twos. Again, zero to two is our projection here. Russell Henley's at the top of this one with Siwoo Kim. Denny McCarthy, which I think is going to be a really popular play, and I think it's very warranted. Uh, Benny Ann, I know back nine bets likes him. Um, and yeah, there's some good names here. So zero to two for this, this bucket. A little bit more challenging to select from than the other one. Just because there's a lot of good names that you can fit into lineups pretty easily. But let's go ahead and move on to course history threes. This was a one to three bucket, by the way. So this is like middle of the pack course history. And it's just mean, it, this is more of like a volume driven bucket. So we're going to have more names to select from, but there's also a lot of good names. So you have Decky, you have Adam Scott, Shane Lauer, JT Poston. Those are all good names to select. Maybe not. I mean, I'm with Byron on this one. I don't really care for Shane Lowry at this course, but that's when he's probably going to play well. Um, and then, yeah, some other good names here. I'll let the, the optimizer choose the golfers uh, that are under $8,000, so $7,900 and below, because I don't really have a lean one way or the other. I, I really don't care. Some of these guys I don't even like, but as I've learned over the last couple of weeks, you kind of just have to... Uh, you got to embrace each of these 7K golfers. Like, if you have a favorite, don't get too in love. It's almost like the 6K range. Like, never fall in love with a 6K golfer, but never disrespect one. That's kind of how I feel about the 7K range. Uh, at least I have been the last couple weeks because I've been choosing the wrong 7K golfers like Lee Hodges. I'm not, I, didn't, I did not choose him. So, Anna Marie, if you're still in the, in the chat, no. There's... We talked about Lee Hodges a little bit when it came to the review, but... Yeah, I didn't choose him because he didn't seem like a good play. <laughs> or at least the optimizer didn't like him. He didn't like him in the, in the buckets. Um, so anyways, one to three. That'll be ch more challenging. I'll let the optimizer do its thing. Of course, if you have some anchor plays that you want to choose from, um, obviously let me know. And then this bucket is zero to three. The course history four is zero to three. So you've got JT, Aaron Rye, Bo Hosler, and then it gets into the 7K range, and then it dives into the 6K range. So... Um, I like JT. This makes me like JT even more. Like I, I would start JT Andrew Putnam lineups and then mix in everything else. Now the, the projection is, uh, zero to three, but I kind of want to make it one to three. I mean, it's, it's very close to being one to three. I mean, technically, I mean, it's this bucket here. It does say one, but because this max projection over here is less than two, that means my minimum has to be zero because this isn't over two. And I don't even know if this is technically over two. It is technically over two. Okay. So for those that are kind of like, what are you talking about? Remember, we always round down with this bucket and we always round up. So if we're looking at the course history fours, we're rounding down from 1.2 to one. Now, this is actually 2.001, so we actually would round that up to 3, because that is over 2, so it goes up to 3. But I do have kind of like a safeguard. This is what I call my conservative max projection. If this isn't over 2, then I move this to 0, my minimum down to 0. So it's, it's just a way to safeguard myself. Like I said, it's a conservative number, 0 to 3. So... As much as I want this to be one and just be like, yes, that's JT. Pick Justin Thomas. Pump the brakes. Maybe it's not JT. Maybe we don't go Justin Thomas. Um, but anyways, moving on. Course history fives and sixes. That's zero to two territory. Uh, course history fives are usually your worst. This is the worst course history you can have. Uh, and <laughs> Gary Woodland's up there. I mean, every one of these guys, except for it looks like Zach Blair has a missed cut average playing at this event. So with that, do as you will. Like, I listened to a podcast with Akshay Batia, or not so much uh, Akshay, but um, 
he was a guest and he this is a home course for him he is from north carolina or at least he's residing in north carolina his hometown is an hour and a half away he loves he loves this event he thinks it's a home field advantage more power to him i guess uh but yeah i don't know man i don't it's it's the worst course history and it's zero to two is the projection when it comes to course history sixes uh this is also zero to two now these are golfers who have zero course history zero these could be rookies these could these could be um you know veterans that just haven't played here since 2013 but as you can tell by some of these names most of these golfers are rookies ludwig aberg vincent norman eric cole thomas dietrich justin Sun, nikolai hoygaard sam stevens they're all newbies on the tour if they weren't new last year they're new this year so zero to two is the projection play play at your own peril i guess um I, I don't have a lean one way or the other. There are some good names here, but this is also a way to safeguard you yourselves to not play more than two of these guys. So that's how the course history buckets look like. Let's move on to the recent form buckets. And of course, this is just to answer the question, does recent form matter here? We have zero recent form one golfers in the field, which recent form means they've been averaging a top 20 finish the last seven weeks. We got zero of those. However, we have one to three recent form twos, two to five recent form threes, uh, one to three recent form fours. So we definitely have anchor buckets here, but we also have kind of large numbers. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. So the first one's one to three, and then it's two to five, and then it's one to three. Yeah, okay. So recent form twos. We start here in the projections one to three. You got Matsuyama, you got Henley, Lowry, Poston, Jaeger. Uh, lots of good names. If you see a golfer you want to anchor your lineups around, I think that's totally fine. I see my guy Eric Cole there. I know I want to play him in a bunch of my lineups. So it's good to see that. I don't mind seeing people like Steven Jaeger, Denny McCarthy. Um, I don't know what to do with Deki or Hideki Matsuyama, Russell Henley. Uh, and I'm there with Byron with Shane Lowry. I just don't want to touch him. I think there's going to be one lineup I create with him that's just going to be a FOMO lineup. Uh, but I don't want to play. I don't want to play Shane Lowry. <laughs> I just don't want to do it. Uh, JT Poston's an interesting uh, candidate, but if I'm if I'm really like thinking about playing certain guys, it'd be these three uh, and Cole. And then kind of secondary options would be like JT, Jaeger, maybe Alex Smalley. Um, I know he's a Duke guy, so North Carolina. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't really have anyone else that I care that much for. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Recent form threes, uh, two to five is the projection here. And it starts with our guy Sungjae. Sungjae is pointing many directions towards being a top 10 finisher this week. So I don't mind someone like Sung J.M. But then there's also Sam Burns, Adam Scott, Ludwig Aber. We kind of talked about. Remember, this is two to five. So this is maybe we start here. If you were to manually manually build lineups, maybe you start here and select some of your golfers from this bucket because it's such a big projection, two to five. And I think it's warranted. There's a lot of good names up here. Now, remember... Even if the projection's two to five, doesn't mean, you know, say there's five golfers that do finish inside the top 10. You may not be able to play all five of those guys because their price tags wouldn't allow you to. So imagine it's those top four golfers. Uh, Sungjae, Burns, Scott, and Aberg. They're all 9,300 and above. I mean, two are in the 10K range, two are in the 9K range. Um, so you can't really add those guys to a lineup because you, it's not going to fit. The salary caps, you're just not going to be able to fit uh, under the salary cap. So be careful with that. You I mean, that's that's kind of the considerations you need to make when building lineups, especially if you're following the bucket system and you're doing it manually. It's like, yeah, that's cool and all, but you might not be able to play each, each golfer. Or, or let's say there's even three golfers that do finish inside the top 10 from this bucket, and it's these three. It means you have to select, or you, you probably have to play two of them but also maybe you can only play one of them because other 9Ks and 8Ks could finish inside the top 10 
and maybe it's like only Sungjae was in the optimal lineup. The other two did finish inside the top 10, but you that wasn't the optimal lineup. And maybe you can't even build lineups if you include these two, or even win a GPP. I mean, it's it's out there, and it that that is a a scenario that probably doesn't really exist, but it is possible, possible. So, anyways, the next bucket to talk about recent form fours. Uh, we have Justin Thomas, Siwoo Kim, Taylor Moore. Those are your AK and above guys, and then drops in the sevens, and it really dives into the sixes. So one to three. This will probably be more of a volatile, uh, more of a volatile bucket. So I don't know if we can really choose golfers from from here. I mean, but JT's my guy, and then I don't mind someone like Siwoo Kim. Maybe it's just those guys, and you can ignore the rest. Maybe I'm not sure. Uh, I can't remember what recent form fives and sixes were, but I bet you they're zero to two. Most likely. Yeah, they're both zero to two. KH Lee leads the recent form fives. That's not super great. I just, there's no golfers really to talk about here. Uh, and then recent form sixes. Same. I mean, there's some steam with like, not so much steam. There's some talk about this Nicholas Lindheim. Because of his results in the Corn Ferry Tour, but I don't know, man. I've never really seen it work out. So that covers your recent form buckets. We can briefly talk about the salary buckets, and we really don't have to talk about the golfers that are in each of those salaries. This is more of just lineup construction, like considerations for you guys. Uh, we really don't have an anchor bucket, and anchor buckets mean you want to select at least one golfer from those buckets. Uh, I, I should say we don't really have one outside the 7k range so as much as the pass optimal and GPP winning lineups were to um, lean you towards playing at least one 10k golfer 0 to 2 is the projection so you know 0 could show up inside the top 10 um, same thing kind of applies for the 9k range that's 0 to 2 8k range is 0 to 2 7K range 2 to 4, 0 to 2 high 6s, and 0 to 2 low 6s. Now, I don't really like to play more than two 6K golfers anyways. So if you were selecting two golfers from the high 6K range, I just would ignore the low 6K range. But that's my, my two cents. Again, we're not going to talk about all these guys. Just know that this is in the optimizer uh, under the salary portion here. So you can see I have 0 to 2, 0 to 2, 0 to 2 for 10K, 9K, 8K. And then 7K, I actually have 1 to 4. Um, let's see, what was that for? What reason? Oh, yeah. Our conservative max projection over here isn't over 3. So that drops the minimum to 1, which means 1 to 4 is our projection, which I like. I like that. And then it shows I don't want to play more than two 6Ks. Uh, and then there you go, two high 6Ks. Uh, max and then just one low 6k you can change this if you do get the optimizer you can change this however you like uh, and go on from there but that's going to cover the salary buckets and the last one to talk about are the stroke chain buckets now these are a little bit different if you want to learn more about how i do stroke gain buckets check the link in the description the video that's there uh, and just watch the the portion of stroke chain buckets but when it comes to this, 0 to 2 strokes gain 1, 0 to 2 strokes gain 2, uh, 2 to 4 strokes gain 3, is that? No, it's 1 to 4. Our, our uh, conservative projection over here is 1 to 4. 1 to 4 strokes gain 4, 0 to 2, 0 to 2. And again, I have this reflected uh, with the strokes gain stats here. 1 to 4, 1 to 4 for our two middle buckets. Everything else is 0 to 2. So if you're on the cheat sheet, again, link in the description, and you wanted to look at strokes gain buckets, all you really have to do is go A to Z. I have this all color coordinated by the buckets. It makes it pretty easy to look at. So anyways, strokes gain one, zero to two. I mean, Sung Jae's there. So is Chris Kirk. Some really good names to, to select from. But two is the max. So don't, don't play more than two. Same thing applies with the strokes gain two buckets. 0 to 2 is our projection here. So if you like more than two golfers, perhaps pump the brakes on that. Uh, unless you're doing cash lineups. If you want to win a GPP, I say you pump the brakes. The strokes gain 3 bucket is 1 to 4. There's a lot of golfers in this bucket. Starts with Hideki Matsuyama, Russell Henley. We also have Justin Thomas here. We have some good names. So yeah, 1 to 4 seems like a pretty solid projection. 
I'm not going to talk about a lot of these guys. We'll we'll cover it more with building lineups. And then one to four is also the same projection for a recent from fours. However, or I should say, however, golfers in this bucket are a little less. I mean, when it comes to salaries, a little less um, uh, valuable, elite. I don't know what word I'm really looking for, but there are far more 7K and below golfers, like low 7K golfers in this bucket. And if there's not, uh, maybe there's just as much. Anyways, one to four is a projection here too, which is really interesting because not a lot of hot, like, you know, Denny, let's put it this way. Adam Hadwin, Denny McCarthy, and JT Poston are the only 8K and above golfers. So if the projection's one to four, good luck. You have to consider some names. I mean, I can't remember. Um, what, uh, Byron, did you like Brendan Todd? I can't remember. I was listening to a podcast. I can't remember who liked Brendan Todd, but Brendan Todd seems like a pretty decent play this week. So I don't mind Brendan Todd. I don't mind like Thomas Dietrich, Harris English, uh, Eric Cole. Obviously, I've been talking about him. Adam Hadwin, I know uh, that's going to be like a community play just because, uh, who was it? PGA Tout, I think. He, who did he? Two years ago, he touted somebody, Kevin Kisner, and Kevin Kisner won. Uh, last year, he did not tout Tom Kim. So keep that in mind. He's He's one for two when it comes to um, hitting a home run at this event, but maybe it's an every other year thing. If you're superstitious, maybe it works that way. But Adam Hadwin was his guy this year. Um, I I like Andrew Putnam too, man. Andrew Putnam is a pretty decent play. Same too as Ben Griffin. Ben Griffin, I think, has good Bermuda splits, right? Oh yeah, uh, that's those are really good splits on Bermuda. And Andrew Putnam's no slouch either are really good when it comes to like just last year bermuda in this bucket or I, i'm sorry not even from this bucket let me let me do this they're the they're the top two golfers same goes with thomas Dietrich. okay cool good to know maybe we just found our golfers in the la in the strokes gain four bucket uh and then when we go to strokes gain five Robbie Schelt. Oh, hold on, hold on. We gotta do our salaries. I was it was by um Bermuda splits. We have Webb at 74, so there's only four golfers in the 7k range. Uh just really in the 7k and above range, and then everyone else is 6k and below. So zero to two is your projection here. And then we don't have many strokes against six golfers. This would be uh the two add-ins. So we have covered the bucket system for the Wyndham championship.